Yes, this looks to be nearly everyone. Let us begin, shall we? Though I am usually the first to hold forth at such events, I think on this occasion that honor should fall to you. They would be more inclined to take the word of the Warrior of Darkness. Indeed. In light of the subject matter, who better than thee to speak these truths? Wicked White? The Warriors of Light did all that? So they never... I mean, they only ever wanted to help. And when everything they'd done turned to ash, they still carried on. They gave everything to stop the Flood. First their lives, then their souls. And they managed it too, in the end. They saved us, and we cursed their names. This should go a long way towards clearing the air. I definitely see something. You don't think it's a ghost, do you? Nay, yonder standeth no bloodless apparition, but a warrior of light and darkness both. What in the world? It's you! The one who slew the Eater! That it should be the Warrior of Darkness who brought the truth to light. You've saved me a fair bit of time. Though I have a few words of my own to say, if I may. People of the Crystarium! I am Ardbert. One of those you know as a warrior of light. That's impossible. You should be dead. Aye, that I should. But as the world has been given you life, so too have I. I know not why I and I alone have been gifted this chance. But I do know this. Only by the will of the star itself could such a miracle come to pass. The hero who stands before you now, the warrior of darkness, is not of this world. And the day will come when she must return to her home. But this land is our home. And if it is to remain so, now and forevermore, 
It is we who must protect it. The time to rely on saviors from afar has passed. It is you who must rise. You who must become the new warriors of light. What? Us? Warriors of light? None of us were born heroes, my friend. I was only ever a man with a thirst for adventure. But wherever my journeys took me, I was invariably confronted with the same choice. To lend what aid I could to those in need, or not. And I always chose the former. Any one of you could do the same. All you need is the will to help your fellow man and the resolve to see it through. From thine own lips did we learn of Ardbert's fate. And by thy countenance, I gather thou art not inclined to recant thy testimony. Yet whosoever this man may be, his words hold truth and resonate with the citizenry besides. For us to voice our doubts here and now would serve but to sow disquiet. Twere better we retired unto the ocular and there discuss this matter in private. Go. I will stay here and watch. So, that is a warrior of light of the first. I've not had the pleasure of making his acquaintance, but as you all seem to be in agreement, I gather this is no simple case of mistaken identity. As far as I was able to discern, that was indeed Artbert. It has been a long time, but not that long. Could he truly have been resurrected as he claims? Ardbert did entrust his very soul unto thee. I see no reason to question thy judgment. Nor I. To my eyes, your ether burns as brightly as the day you slew Emmet Selk. That is proof that he is with you still. Yet that which standeth now before the people is far more than a passing imitation. I am reminded of the cardinal virtues. Though a Sin Eater, he is not. Which leaveth but one plausible explanation. That he is an Asian. Given their fondness for posthumous possession, I would have to agree. From what I understand, the Warriors of Light were laid to rest in Yulmor by those whom they had aided in life. At the time, some few still remembered them as heroes. Needless to say, four of them were subsequently exhumed to serve as the Virtues. And if one knew where to look, Ardbert too would not have been difficult to find. Assuming then that this is indeed the work of an Asian. My mind inevitably turns to the last remaining paragon to survive the Sundering. Elidibus.
That Xenos hath reclaimed his own flesh is known. Thus evicted from his borrowed form and cognizant no doubt of Emmet Selk's failure here in the first, it is quite possible the emissary chose Ardbert for his next vessel. Inhabiting the flesh of the fallen? My, that is unsavory. And they do this often, you say? Verily, for they possess no corporeal forms of their own. In what one may term their natural state, none save those gifted with the echo can perceive them. Indeed, when Elidibus intruded upon the waking sands, his presence did go unmarked by all save Minfilia and the Warrior of Light. On that occasion, I myself remained ignorant of his coming until after his departure. It was only at a later juncture, when he deigned to appear before me in borrowed flesh, that I was finally able to take the measure of him. In such puppetry do the Asians engage when they seek to influence the course of history. And they have gained much by it. Emmet Selk single-handedly built the Garlean Empire in this manner, while the Hebrea came close to conquering Eorzea, having taken possession of Thancred's living body. Yet it must needs be noted that the Asians cannot avail themselves of all mortal vessels. For were they able to do so, none would serve as a better pawn than our own redoubtable champion. Mayhap the blessing of light shieldeth Hydlin's chosen from Asian influence. Or mayhap other forces are at work. We cannot say for certain. Whatever the reason, I hope it holds true. I dare not contemplate what might come to pass otherwise. Is it not peculiar, then, that Ardbert's mortal remains should be susceptible, given that he was once a warrior of light? Or did the final departure of his soul make it possible, perhaps? Regardless, to hear an Asian use him to call forth new warriors of light boggles the mind. Elidibus hath ever been an enigma, his ostensible purpose being to preserve the balance between light and dark. When he made overtures towards me, however, I was afforded a glimpse behind the mask of the self-appointed emissary. I shall not defend mine actions. Undertaken in pursuit of a better understanding of our foe as either wise or prudent. Nevertheless, what little I did glean may now prove useful. Elidibus possesseth a subtle mind, practiced in the art of manipulation. That he coax this star's most valiant heroes as far as the source with naught save half-truths is no trifling feat. And now I believe he doth employ his skills once more to some as yet unknown end. Though naught is certain, should my suspicions prove true, we shall have need of all our wits if we are to uncover and thereafter thwart his plot. Agreed. It is plain that simply speaking out against him will not avail us. At best, it would only serve to confuse the people. And I would hesitate to do anything which might tarnish Ardbert's reputation once more, nor yours by association. That being the case, it may be wise to keep a covert eye on this Ardbert's movements as we attempt to discern his purpose and how best to mitigate his influence. His performance appears to have concluded. 
What now? Go back out and follow him? It would appear Master Alfino already hath pursuit in mind, and I suspect one pair of eyes shall better serve our cause than half a dozen. Let the rest of us maintain an inconspicuous distance, for the present at least. <laughs> 